Hi, I'm Daniel, and before the episode starts, I want to briefly talk to you about the Garden Outreach Project, a WCF program focused on putting faith into action. Our mission is to inspire and support Christadelphians in North America to share Christ's love through outreach initiatives. This is done by facilitating national and local outreach activities, supplying resources, and providing funds to help brothers and sisters serve those in need. For example, in 2020, over 40 ecclesial groups participated in our Bags of Love initiative, which saw over 800 sleeping bags distributed to shelters and those without a home. If you, your ecclesia, or CYC want to learn more and get involved with our latest initiative, please visit our website at www.thegardenoutreach.org. You can also follow us on Facebook and Instagram at The Garden Outreach for the latest news and encouragement. And now, here's the show. Today, I'm talking to Heather Logan Kelly, who lives on the Oregon coast. So, Heather, can you tell me a bit about yourself and your ecclesia? I am one of five children. My twin sister and I are the youngest of Pixie McLeod children, many People know my mother's name. Um, our ecclesia at this point has dwindled to four. It's myself, my twin sister, her husband, and her son, Jeremy, who is 45 and suffers from cystic fibrosis. So you're in quite a small group there on the coast. Yes. Is, is that quite a struggle for you? How do you find that? It's one of the reasons that doing the Knit Together has been so nice for me because it has helped me feel part of a larger body, which we haven't had since we haven't been able to go to Bible schools, for instance. You know, I used to to take my mother to Manuka, and that's just wonderful about this this whole big body together. And most of those people we would see year after year. Yeah. And, and since that's gone, the knit together helps fill that need uh, for me. Sure. So tell me about knit together. How did you, you hear about it and how did you get involved? I think that my brother-in-law as recording brother got, an email and since since he sees me knitting he thought "Ah." so that was how I got involved sure and when did you start knitting I started knitting at a very early age because my mother really truly knitted I mean she knitted beautiful complicated things me I'm I'm on a much more basic level. I'm doing like baby blankets and shawls because I one of the things that I got out of the knit together was that one of the ladies was sending things to the Indian reservations. Yeah. And I've been to those Indian reservations or through that country, and it's as desolate as you can imagine. It's barren it's absolutely barren and if they want to stay there and have any ethnic identity then they can't go anywhere else and there's Uh and there's nothing there for them economically so I thought okay this is this is something that we can do to help and Jeremy my nephew is like quarter Cherokee Oh, so, right. Yeah. 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 So uh, I'll discuss what has happened to the people on the reservations and that any help that we can give them is a really good thing to do. Okay. So just to fill folks in, the Knit Together is a garden initiative. And basically, we're just encouraging brothers and sisters in North America to knit for anyone who needs help so some of us have been knitting I've been knitting hats for the homeless 
Heather's been obviously knitting for the Indian reservations, which is great. And, and other people have been knitting for um, baby units, premature baby units in hospital. So there's all sorts of things that we've been doing. So when you've knitted an item, Heather, how do you get it to the Indian reservation? I haven't actually done it yet, but I got addresses so I can mail them directly to the people there who will distribute them. So it's pretty straightforward to do then. Just get an address and really anything's welcome. Yeah. How We also also did here, when my husband and I first moved back to this area, I was just driving by a center. It's called the Devereaux Center for the homeless. And they just had things up on a signboard, foods that they needed, uh, bread and sandwich makings that have proteins. <clears throat> that was how I first became aware of them. <clears throat> and, and so we have continued over the years, taking them food, taking them clothes. And so when the bags of love thing came up, I thought of them and they were really excited when I went in and, and talked to the manager because she said some of these people have never had a new sleeping bag with a zipper that works. Wow. Um, yeah. <clears throat> and it gets cold here on the coast. If you've sure. ever camped out in tents, it gets cold. Yep. I'm sure it does. How did you go about receiving the sleeping bags and how many did you get? How did that work? We got the maximum. We got 20. Yeah. And I just emailed Again, it was something that was sent to my recording brother. Yep. I emailed the response and gave them my address and they came here in boxes. So it was really easy. Yep. And then I, I just threw them in. I took them out of the boxes and put them in the back of my car and, and took them up to the Devereaux Center. So. Wow. Yeah, one of the things we felt with Bags of Love and Knit Together is it doesn't <clears throat> matter how small or big your ecclesia is. These things are something that we can all join in with and, yep. and work together. So that's one of the lovely things that I felt yep. about it. In terms of our faith, why do you think that reaching out like this is an important part of following Jesus? When I was taking the sleeping bags out of the car, the guy who was helping me said, uh, where did these come from? And I said, from my church. Mm-hmm. And he said, oh, that's really cool. And in the neck of each sleeping bag, we put a New Testament with a flyer thing about the Christadelphians. Yeah. Um, If the most important and most valuable thing in your life is your faith, then that's the best thing that you can give to anyone else. Yes. Yep. The most, and love doesn't cost anything. Hmm. Love is what we can always give away. And when you give things people with love, they feel it. They really do. They feel the difference. Yeah. That's my belief. That's lovely. So have you been involved in any other outreach work? I know you've mentioned the the Devereaux Centre and the Knit Together. No, just those things. Just those things. But... Yeah, from what you're saying, it it needn't be something that's overwhelming or or difficult, just something given in love, a knitted item or a pair of socks, whatever it is. I think these are little acts of kindness we can do to show our faith. Homeless people, the first thing they always want is they want socks and underwear. Mm -hmm. So when they're on sale, I buy them and I was buying some are on sale and the gentleman who was checking me out said oh somebody's going to have warm feet and I said oh I'm getting them from for the Devereaux Center because they're on love on on sale and 
<clears throat> he said, uh, I can't remember exactly what he said, but he made it clear that he was a Christian. Yep. And that he appreciated what I was doing and that it was reminding him to reach out to them because I really feel like the homeless are the least of us. They are those most desperately in need and not always necessarily because of choices that they have made. The first time that I went in and talked to the manager, the then manager at the Devereaux Center, it was a lovely woman. And she said she had spent two years homeless with children. Wow. So she knew. <laughs> she understood what people go through. Picture being homeless with children. We live in such luxury compared to most of the world. We yeah. live in just incredible luxury. I've never gone to bed hungry because I had to. I've never slept cold except camping. <laughs> Sure. <laughs> yeah. And again, even then, if you want to, you can get up and sit in the car. I mean, you know. Yeah. We don't have to deal with the things that these people do. And again, the most precious thing that we have is our faith. So that's the most precious thing that we can share. Yep. That's lovely. Yeah, to me, it, it's part of when Jesus said, treat others as you want to be treated, I often think of myself, what if I were homeless? How would I want people to treat me? And I'd be so glad of any help. So we can all be down on our luck in life. It can happen to anyone, especially in COVID. The homelessness yes. in Portland has just shot up because people have just lost their jobs. And a lot of people are just one paycheck away from the streets. There are a great many, the majority of people in our country live from paycheck to paycheck. So when that is interrupted, they're in trouble. Yeah. Yeah. And I read somewhere something that quite stunned me, that the thing that protects us most from homelessness is not necessarily our family, but our church community. So if you're a member of a church, one of the main safeguards for people against ending up on the street was if they were a member of a church community, yeah. which surprised me in a way because I guess being part of the Christadelphian community, in some ways we probably take it for granted but as soon as I read that, I thought, yeah, I can't imagine anyone in our community, say, if they lost their job or had a relationship breakdown, that they'd end up on the streets because yeah. we just support we just each other. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for the chat, Heather. Is there anything else you want to talk about? No, I'm good. No, that, <laughs> that, that was great. I think if we can just encourage people I think sometimes people think well I'm on my own or I'm part of a small ecclesia and we're all getting old and we can't do anything what you've just said shown is that's not true <laughs> we can always do we things can all, we could you can always find something there yeah. are always people in need and I'm really jazzed about being able to send things to the Indian reservations because I didn't have that information before. Yeah. But it's something that has always really touched my heart. Yeah. That's really great for me. Okay. That's fantastic. Well, I hope to see you next Monday for our next Knit Together virtual meetup. Yeah. I, I've got to say, I, I'm really pleased with um, how they've been going. We didn't know what to expect or who would come along, but it's a really nice group. And they always feel yes. better <laughs> after our virtual knitting time than I did before. So that's got to be a good yeah. thing. Uh -huh. I agree. Yeah. I agree. It's a blessing. Yeah. Okay. Well, lots okay. of love and I'll see you next week, God willing. 
Okay. Thank and you thank so you very much. Thank you. You're, you're very welcome. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.